For billions of years, something has been hunting every living thing on the planet. Insects, bacteria, algae, animals, even humans. It's the most relentless predator Earth has ever seen. Look closer in a single drop of seawater, one of these hunters drifts. It locks onto a cell, breaks in, and takes it over. The prey swells until it finally ruptures. From its remains, thousands of new predators spill out, ready to hunt again. This is a virus, the most abundant biological entity on Earth. Scientists once thought they were simple parasites, but new discoveries suggest viruses might have been controlling the life on Earth since the dawn of time. Four billion years ago, Earth was nothing like it was today. The planet was covered in warm, shallow pools filled with simple chemicals that mixed and reacted under intense sunlight and lightning storms. Inside this chemical soup, there were tiny, fragile molecules that could miraculously copy themselves. Scientists would call this the RNA world. This was a time long before animals, plants, or even cells, when the oceans were full of fragile strands of code. Most of them broke apart in the waves, but a few found a way to protect themselves inside tiny shells. That is when the very first virus-like forms appeared. And they didn't come from just one beginning. Some might have been loose bits of RNA molecules drifting in the seas. Some broke away from early cells, and others might have been cells that slowly lost everything except the ability to infect. Some might even have mysteriously been there before cells even appeared, but we don't know for sure. Despite their origins, viruses were already everywhere when the first true life appeared, waiting for something much bigger. Once cells figured out how to survive, viruses followed them everywhere. In the ancient oceans, bacteriophages exploded into existence. These viruses hunted bacteria, and they became the most abundant biological entities on the planet. But bacteria weren't the only targets. Archaea, those strange, single-celled organisms that thrive in boiling hot springs and salt lakes, got their own specialized viruses. These archaeal viruses evolved bizarre shapes that look nothing like other viruses. Some are bottle-shaped, others form long spirals or perfect spheres covered in spikes. Then, around a billion years ago, something new appeared on Earth, multicellular life. Plants emerged from the water, fungi colonized the land, animals crawled out of the oceans and began their conquest of every environment on the planet. And viruses followed every single one of them. But many viral families evolved the same tricks independently over and over again. For example, retroviruses. These are viruses that carry RNA but convert it into DNA inside their host cells. This same strategy appeared in fish, then in birds, then in mammals. Each time, evolution discovered the same solution to the same problem. And we know this because our own bodies carry the evidence. Roughly 8% of human DNA is made from ancient retroviruses. These aren't active infections, they're fossils. Millions of years ago, retroviruses infected our ancestors. Some of those infections happened in sperm or egg cells, and the viral DNA got passed down through generations. These genetic scars are still sitting in your genome right now. After Mimi virus shocked the scientific world in 2003, researchers started finding more giants. Pandora viruses and pithoviruses turned up in samples from around the globe. Some of these giants carry over 2,500 genes. They build elaborate internal structures. They even get infected by smaller viruses, creating parasites of parasites. The viral world had experimented with nearly every possible genetic strategy, but their hosts weren't just sitting there waiting to be infected. Around two billion years ago, bacteria evolved a defense system that would eventually revolutionize science. They developed CRISPR, a molecular memory bank that remembers past viral infections. When a bacterium survives a viral attack, it takes a piece of the virus's DNA and stores it. If that virus ever comes back, the bacterium recognizes it immediately and destroys it. Every time viruses evolved a new attack strategy, hosts evolved a new defense. This war has been raging for billions of years, and it's driven some of the most extreme innovations in the history of life. But the insanity was just beginning, because some viruses were about to do something that would change evolution itself. By 50 million years ago, Earth was crawling with life. Mammals were spreading across continents, insects filled every ecological niche, the oceans teemed with bacteria and algae, and everywhere, viruses were waging war. But scientists were about to discover something nobody expected. A war within a war. In 2008, researchers discovered something that changed how we understood viral warfare. 
Inside an amoeba infected by mama virus, they found a second, smaller one. They named it Sputnik. But Sputnik wasn't attacking the amoeba, it was attacking mama virus itself. Sputnik hijacked the viral factory mama virus had built, stealing its resources to replicate. And the results are devastating. Mama virus production dropped 70% while Sputnik multiplied. This layered predator-prey dynamic is exactly what we explored in our video, The Evolution of Hyperparasites, showing how even invaders can become victims in nature's most complex battles. The discovery revealed that viral ecosystems aren't simple. They are nested hierarchies where hunters become the hunted. Scientists call these viral parasites virophages. They're viruses that hunt other viruses, creating a food chain at the microscopic level. Like in the oceans right now, Viruses are killing 20% of all bacteria every single day. There are roughly 10 million viruses in every drop of seawater. Across all the world's oceans, that adds up to about 10 followed by 30 zeros. But the conflict is shaping all life on Earth because some viruses were about to start rewriting the very blueprint of evolution. Viruses kill trillions of organisms every day, but they're not just destroyers. They're the invisible architects holding entire ecosystems together. If bacteria weren't kept in check, a few dominant species would take over everything. They consume all available nutrients, crowd out competitors, and turn the ocean into a bacterial wasteland. Viruses prevent this disaster by acting as kind of like population control. They target the most abundant bacteria first, keeping any single species from dominating. When they kill a cell, they release all its nutrients back into the water. This viral killing creates a constant cycle of death and renewal that keeps ocean ecosystems stable and productive. The same thing happens in soil. Bacteriophages hunt down bacterial blooms before they can monopolize resources. They accelerate nutrient recycling and keep microbial communities diverse. Everywhere viruses go, they maintain balance. But their influence goes far deeper than just population control. Viruses have been reshaping the genetic code of life for billions of years. See, when a virus infects a cell, it sometimes makes mistakes. It accidentally picks up a piece of the host's DNA and carries it to the next victim. This process, called horizontal gene transfer, shuffles useful genes between completely unrelated organisms. A bacterium living in the Antarctic ice might receive a gene from a tropical ocean microbe delivered by a virus that infected both. Over geological time, viruses have moved billions of genes across the tree of life. Yet, in nature, viruses often prevent disasters rather than cause them. Even inside your own body, viruses are keeping you alive. Your digestive system houses trillions of bacteria. Most are helpful, breaking down food and producing vitamins, but bacterial populations can get out of balance. Bacteriophages living in your gut constantly patrol the bacterial community. They kill off old cells, prevent any single cell bacterial species from taking over, Every day, trillions of viral infections happen inside your intestines. These invisible battles help you digest food and stay healthy. Scientists now estimate that viruses are the largest reservoir of genetic diversity on Earth. If you lined up all the viruses in the ocean end to end, they would stretch beyond the nearest 60 galaxies. Every one of those viruses represents a potential genetic experiment, and some of those experiments rewrote the rules entirely. Humans have been locked in battle with viruses for our entire existence, essentially. Some of those battles killed us, others changed us, a few even built the bodies we live in today. That 8% of human DNA that came from ancient retroviruses isn't just sitting there doing nothing. Evolution repurposed chunks of it for embryonic development. Get this, viral genes now help human embryos implant in the uterus. They regulate when certain genes turn on and off during pregnancy. Instructions for building a human body came partially from viruses that infected our ancestors millions of years ago. But our relationship with viruses goes far beyond ancient history. Right now, Doctors are using viruses as living weapons against bacteria that antibiotics can't kill. Dozens of clinical trials are testing phages against superbugs that were once death sentences. We're fighting parasites with other parasites, using weapons that evolution spent billions of years perfecting. Farmers have been doing the same thing for decades. Instead of spraying chemical pesticides, they release viruses that target specific crop pests. Baculoviruses kill caterpillars without harming other insects. 
One product, called AQ10, uses a fungus infected with a virus to control powdery mildew on crops. The virus-weakened fungus attacks the plant disease but can't spread aggressively itself. It's biological warfare at the microscopic level and it keeps our food supply safe without poisoning the environment. In biotechnology, viral tools are everywhere. Modified viruses deliver genes and experimental therapies. They carry corrected DNA into patients with genetic disorders. Some viruses are even being engineered to specifically target and kill cancer cells while leaving healthy tissue alone. Even CRISPR, the gene editing tool that won a Nobel Prize, came from studying how bacteria defend themselves against viruses. Scientists are now engineering bacteriophages to carry CRISPR payloads. These designer viruses hunt specific bacteria and use CRISPR to cut up their DNA killing them with surgical precision. We've turned an ancient viral war into the most powerful gene editor on Earth. Companies are mining viral genomes for new antibiotics and antifungals. Each virus represents millions of years of evolution focused on defeating specific enemies. The chemicals they produce could inspire entirely new classes of medicines, and sometimes viruses make diseases worse not better. The cholera toxin that kills hundreds of thousands of people each year doesn't come from the cholera bacterium itself. It comes from a virus infecting that bacterium. The Shiga toxin that makes certain E. coli strands deadly is also a viral gene that got incorporated into bacterial DNA. Many emerging human diseases started when animal viruses picked up new genes and jumped to people. HIV, Ebola, and influenza all crossed species barriers after evolving in other animals. The COVID-19 pandemic showed how quickly a virus can spread and evolve, but it also showed how quickly we can respond. We're learning to turn viral weapons against the diseases that kill us, but viruses are also reminders that nature is never simple. Every viral breakthrough in medicine comes with risks. Every time we deploy viruses as tools, we enter an ancient game with rules we barely understand. Each virus is both creator and destroyer. Each infection is both threat an opportunity. In many ways, the story of life on Earth is the story of viruses. These microscopic titans were here long before us, and they'll be here long after we're gone. Because the future of life on Earth depends as much on the smallest organisms as it does on the largest ones. The invisible war continues, and we're only just beginning to see the battlefield. But viruses aren't the only masters of invasion and control. Some organisms have evolved strategies so devious they make viral hijacking look merciful. Check out our video on the evolution of parasites to discover nature's most brutal survival strategies. Thanks for watching.